Just want to thank everybody that, that uh, came out to support our team Friday night. I mean, it was just a really special atmosphere. Um, as good and as energetic a place as a sporting event as I've ever I've ever been in from from start to finish. Um, played a huge role in the game, and, and we certainly appreciate it. Um, now our challenge is to turn the page and move forward and get ready for Middle Tennessee State. Um, you think about the first game of the year when it's a conference game, and you know somebody that you've got regional connections with, and you. Basically, you've been thinking about that game for six months, and then the game's over, and you've got six days to get ready to play the next one. And that's a huge challenge for us right now. We have four non-conference games in the next five weeks. We just take, take last week and put it in the bank and put it to the side and go focus on our non-conference schedule. I mean, you play non-conference games for postseason recognition. and. It starts with uh, Middle Tennessee this Saturday. Uh, we've got to do a great job as coaches and as a staff of, of getting refocused, wiping the slate clean, getting recharged, fill, fill our, our cups back up emotionally, mentally, and physically so that, so that we can put a, a great effort out there Saturday. And we'll, we will be challenged. I mean, Coach Stock has been at MTSU, I think, for 16 years. Uh, he's done a fantastic job there for for some time. You know, they can run. When you look at their overall team speed on both sides of the ball, um, they they can. They've always been fast, and they can really run. They scored 50 points last week, and we've got to get our football team ready to go. And if we're um, got serious aspirations about being the type of football team that that we've talked about then we've got to be able to do these types of things. We've got to be able to uh, put, the, put the previous week behind us and, and move forward. There's plenty for us to work on in all three phases, and we'll need it heading into this week. So questions? You mentioned moving on. I mean, a lot this feels familiar to having a big win in 2018 against Florida State, and then you know you lose to ODU. Do you, do you take any lessons from that? Is that something that kind of bring up at all, or you know that that losing focus after that big win? Was that the next week? Two weeks or a couple weeks? Like the second. Yeah. So I mean, I, no. I mean, I, I understand that part of it. It's not something I'm going to bring up with this team. This team had little to nothing to do with that, but. Um, you know, the bottom line is we've got six days. We've got to turn around. And we got to get, we've got to get ready to go. And if we are a mature, older football team, like I think we, we are or we claim to be, then, then we've got to do a great job. It starts with the coaches and bleeds down to the leadership council and then throughout the rest of the older players and to the younger ones. Justin, looking back at some of the special teams, are you amazed that you guys didn't get one of those punts the other day, and, and how are you? How do you think your special teams performed in the game? Well, the first punt is the one with Jalen that I still can't figure out how he didn't get it. You know, it, it, on film it looks like it went underneath him. I've, somebody showed me a picture; it looked like it went through his hands. Um, I felt good going into the game about that unit. You know, quite honestly, that unit underperformed last year dramatically, the PBR unit, and. Uh, I thought we were going to have a chance to influence the game. This one of the next ones was such a weird situation. We had a little problem getting everybody on the field. You know, they had the, I can't remember the specifics of it, but they had the ball um, in plus territory and it would have been a, a kind of a punt safe situation, but then there was a big sack and brought them all the way back out of field goal range into a super long punt scenario and we nobody could hear anything I mean it was just pandemonium so we 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 went from not putting the PBR unit on to putting them on to maybe being field goal block to all of a sudden trying to get our PBR unit on there we, we ran them on there late and didn't really have much of a chance to to make an impact but um, you know I wish we would have gotten the first one you know but uh, the difference between blocking one and, and not blocking one is sometimes really really small and um, it was just good to see us put some pressure on him, 
um, and have Tavion back there fielding the ball with some confidence. Uh, hopefully we can build on it. Uh, Amari Barno, I've had the big game, but you used him in coverage quite a bit. I mean, like a dozen snaps. I think that was as many as he played all year last year. Was that something going into the game you felt like he could get, give you guys? And, and what was kind of the game plan there for him? Well, I mean, they we're doing a couple different things with him, and, and some of that requires him to drop. He does have some coverage skills. Um, some of it is, is, you know, basically spying on the quarterback, and some of it is, is getting down there and playing. So... He's got a versatile skill set, and um, you know he seems to be adapting to to the different things that we're asking him to do pretty well. Is that so, something you might not have been able to handle last year, having been thrown in the position? Is that something you kind of add to his plate now? Well, uh, I don't know if that was an Amari Barno thing as much as it was the whole circumstances of everything that was going on. You know, like there wasn't a lot of time for tinkering. Right? It was just who, who can we get lined up to go play. So um, obviously we've had some practice time now and had some chances to, to look at some things and, and see what some guys can and can't do. Justin, I know you guys were obviously in a unique spot with having a conference game, but when you look at what the rest of the league was able to do this weekend, I don't know, do you take any solace in the fact that maybe you guys held up the bargain for some of the rest of the conference? Do you pay attention to that stuff? How do you kind of feel about that? Well, I, I pay attention to it in the fact that, especially when we play on a Friday, like I have a little bit more time on Saturday to watch ball games. But I try not to make too much of it. It's one week. I mean, it's a long season. There's a lot of things that can happen. Um, you know, about who everybody's in a rush to judgment about how good or bad anybody is. And the bottom line is, uh, with maybe one or two exceptions across the country, we're all figuring it out. And um, so I, I watched it and, and enjoyed it, but I would um, stop short of uh, waving the banner for or against any team right now. There's a lot of football to be played. I, have you had the opportunity to watch any Middle Tennessee film yet? And, you know, Bailey Hawkman's their quarterback you guys facing with NC State last year. Sure. Bailey had a good game last week. Um, you know, they – they opened with a with a big win. They played Saturday, so certainly we're we're well down the road in the game plan. Like I said, well, the first thing that that steps that jumps out at you when you watch the film is is Middle Tennessee's overall team speed on both sides of the ball. You know, Scott Schaefer's the defensive coordinator. The guy's uh, been a coordinator at a whole bunch of places. Been a head coach. They're well schooled and sound, and they get down and challenge you. It's kind of modeled a little bit off off the pit defense. So, I mean, this will be um, not just schematically, but personnel-wise, it will be a big challenge in all three phases. Keyshawn King um, with the fumble, and then I don't know if he played. I think he may have played a snap or two after, but didn't get a carry. What did you tell him, and how do you got to kind of get him over that uh, the miscue, early miscue? Well, I told him he was going to go back in the game, that he wasn't done for the day, that he needed to stay ready. But obviously he's going to have to hold on to the ball, and he knows that. So... Um, we didn't deliberately not have him carry the ball because of that, but we did rotate him in a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's something he knows and he understands, and he's perfectly capable of, of doing it. He's plenty strong enough and, and, and pretty t plenty tough enough to do that, and I feel good that, that he will. Um, but I, I, what I told him was, like, yeah, I don't like what happened, but I'm not down on you. You got to keep your head up and get ready to go back in the game. Scott to uh, Zoom, David Teal. Justin, you're going to be playing a game Saturday on a pretty solemn anniversary in this country. What was the quarterback's coach at Illinois State doing on that Tuesday morning? And how did that event affect you then and moving forward, you and or your family? Um, we were game planning for Eastern Illinois and Tony Romo. Tony Romo was the quarterback for Eastern that year. Um, I mean, the things that stick out in my mind from that, that moment was – how shocked I, I was when the buildings came down. Like, I, when I was watching it, I, I, it didn't really cross my mind that that might happen. I mean, I, I could see, obviously, the fire and 
what was going on and, and how terrible it was. But when the first building came down, I just, um, you know, immediately went to the thoughts of the people that were probably rushing into that building to save the people that were currently in there. Um, you know, when I think back on it all this time, I try my best to also try to remember the role that sports played in trying our best to unify everyone after such a terrible event. And I often have thought about this because it's been brought up more than once because we're, we're coming upon the anniversary. Is it did take such a terrible thing for us to see past all our differences and get along a little better. And I really wish it didn't take that for all of us. You know, I really wish we didn't have to go through such a such a difficult, horrendous event in order for us to all um, do a better job understanding our neighbors. And um, there was a tremendous sense of pride in our country and unity post September 11th. And um, I just hope that maybe when we reflect on it all these years later, we could do a little, we and I could do a better job of, of, of having some, some compassion and pride for, for our fellow Americans um, so that we don't have to go through such a difficult thing in order to appreciate them. Um, it'll be interesting, obviously, the unique and fun part of, of coaching and working at Virginia Tech is our tie to the military. And um, I know this will be an emotional game as well, emotional date for, for, for many of our people that are, that are associated with Virginia Tech. Thank you. Mike Barber. Hey, Justin, I, I'm curious just over the span of your career, um, week one, week two, early games, do you feel like the defense uh, has an edge over the offense or is it um, no real trend or pattern there? You cut out a little bit. You asked me if early in the season the defense have an advantage. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was a little shocked just across the country at the, at the at the um, at least the games I watched. I watched the Penn State game uh, versus Wisconsin. I watched obviously the Clemson Georgia game. Our game wasn't very high scoring. It was a little bit shocking in today's day and age. You know. Um, I don't know if that's an early season thing or if that's just a, a small sample size of, of what you got. There's certainly people that scored points across the country. There is a little bit of, of timing and execution. And I thought for our part, uh, on the first half, our execution level was, was pretty high. In the second half, it certainly slipped a little bit. But um, I don't know if that's, that's an overarching theme of early in the year or not. I, um, I'd be interested to see how, how things go this week or if that's just a byproduct of the matchups. And not to belabor this, because I know we've talked about this a lot, but um, your defense was in a much better place uh, going into this Carolina game in terms of preparation and foundation. Um, just from your point of view, uh, how did that kind of show up maybe early beyond the statistics? Was there something you noticed that you said, okay, our defense is in a good place? Oh, I, I felt good about our our preparation. I, you know, I felt, of course, I mean, you can feel good about your preparation and still play really good people, and, it, and it'd be hard. But, um, you know, I just, you know, right from, right from the start, I felt good about how we looked on the field in terms of our just overall team speed. I felt like we looked fast and we're playing fast. And when we went back and looked at the film, we didn't do all that much on the defensive side of the ball, but our kids played fast. And we gave them a chance to, to go cut it loose and play. And when we were in one-on-one -on -one situations, the majority of the time we, we, made, we made those plays. We didn't play the screen game very well when you look at the film, but, um, but we, we were playing fast and we were, we were winning some of those one-on-one -on -one battles. So. Um, I felt good going into the game, but but again, I didn't. Really, you're not really sure what you're going to see. You don't get many preseason games in this this deal. Thank you. Anybody else for coach? All right.
Pete, can I sneak in one more? Yeah, absolutely, David. Justin, I, I presume the Eastern Illinois game that week was canceled or postponed. Do, do you remember your first game back after 9-11 and what, what kind of atmosphere that might have been like, or is that too many fourth quarters ago? Yeah, I, I do remember that, we yes, the game was canceled. And for some some reason, we picked up Texas State, who was 1AA at the time. Um, but I can't remember, David, for the life. I can't remember exactly if that was the next week or how it all how it all worked out. Um, I just you're right. It's it's just it's it's been a little while. Um, and we were we. If my recollection is right, like we were struggling a little bit. So the days, the nights were short and the days were long at that time. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. All right. Thank you, Coach. You bet.